This is Jesus Manuel Mena Garza. I hope you're doing fantastic where you're at. It's May 11th, uh, 2023, and I'm home in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, where I've lived for the last, uh, let me see, since uh, 2012. And before that, I lived in Austin from uh, 2000 to 2007. So I've lived quite a significant portion of my existence in uh, Texas. But I also uh, lived in California since birth to about uh, 2000. And then I had a seven year period where I lived in Southern California from 2005 to 2012. So I have experience in both uh, states and my parents are originally uh, born and raised in uh, South Texas. And my family goes back in Texas since the 1700s. They've gone from Mexico to Texas, Texas to Mexico. You know, it was a very fluid border uh, for a long, long, long time. And it still is to a certain certain extent, okay? So what am I gonna be talking about today? I'm gonna be talking about uh, the differences between camping in California and camping in Texas. And I have my notes right here and I'm gonna be reading from them. So once in a while, I'm gonna be glancing down. I thought about bringing my laptop in here, but I said, that's overkill. Just write down your little notes on a piece of paper. Do it old school. Use a pen and a piece of paper. What can I say? I'm old school. So let's talk about the differences. First of all, uh, both areas have uh, beaches. They both have mountains. They both have valleys. They both have desert, very dry areas. And uh, it's a very diverse uh, climate both in California and in Texas. Texas has very few mountains. They're mainly down uh, over there by Big Bend. It's a very beautiful area. I love, I've been to Big Bend and I've camped at Big Bend. I absolutely love it, especially the Rio Grande, the Rio Bravo as it passes through there. Absolutely fantastic. You can do some boondocking there. You can do some, uh, you know, hookup camping down there also. So it, they have a lot of camping options in Big Bend, California. I've also camped at the beach, uh, you know, Port Aransas, uh, Port O'Connor, etc., etc. Absolutely great beaches. A shock to this California boy. I go, hey, this water is warm. This water is very shallow, goes out quite a ways. You can go 50, 60 feet, and it's still only a few feet deep, and you can see the fish jumping around and stuff like that. Very nice water here in Texas. I absolutely love the beaches and I love them better than California beaches for swimming, for wading, uh, but not for necessarily fishing. But if you have a big boat, both areas are absolutely fantastic for fishing. Uh, so uh, I've been to all the areas and uh, I really enjoy them both for their uniqueness. Of course, California beaches are cold water beaches and uh, they're, you know, they're, they're very nice beaches and uh, very popular, especially in Southern California. You have this gigantic city, the second largest city in the United States, Los Angeles, uh, California, right there next to the beach. And of course, all those millions upon millions upon millions of Southern Californians uh, during the summer months when it gets, ooh, 80 degrees. That's really hot, uh, 90 degrees. That's super caliente. They're at the beach uh, relaxing. Uh, hanging out of the pier, fishing, going on a boat, fishing or sailing or and just boating and uh, just hanging out, having an ice cream, uh, going on the roller coaster rides, whatever they're going to do at different types of beaches and do some, sh maybe do some shopping, uh, you know, Laguna Beach, uh, you know, all kinds of different beaches. Up north in uh, where I grew up, I would go to Muir Beach, Capitola Beach, Santa Cruz, and uh, Arroyo de Frijoles. Uh, <laughs> there's a place called like that between San Francisco and San Jose. And I would go fishing. I'd go take my children there. We have barbecues. We have, you know, make a couple sandwiches, etc. We have a great, great time, especially San Jose and Santa Cruz. You know, it's only like 25 miles difference. You just go over the Santa Cruz mountains and there you are at the beach. And uh, it could be in the middle of summer and it's, uh, you know, 80 five degrees, 90 degrees in San Jose, you go over the mountain, shoop, and it's foggy. And in the 60s and 70s, just that, uh, you know, coastal overcast, uh, very nice. So very different uh, experiences as you go camping and, uh, you know, 
playing tourist or just having fun in California and Texas. Both have their benefits. If I was to go to a beach and I wanted to do some wading, I wanted to do a little bit of swimming, I would pick California. Not California, not California, even though I'm a Californian, basically. I would go to Texas, South Texas, absolutely fantastic. I would just, I just, you know, relax in the water and just, and just call it good, especially during the summer when it's super, super, super hot. Again, Texas has one thing over California, the diversity of weather. It, when it gets cold here in uh you know, Fort Worth, it gets cold. It snows, it's cold, it's cold, cold. When it gets hot here, it gets hot 100 plus degrees for like several weeks, if not months sometimes. So, but California, where I grew up, I grew up in the Mediterranean area of California called San Jose, California. A lot of uh, Portuguese people, a lot of Italians, a lot of uh, Yugoslavians, a lot of people from Mexico, a lot of people from Texas moved down there and they love the weather. Mediterranean climate, it's calm by, the, you know, it's the weather, weather, let me say it again, the weather is uh, moderated because it's so close to the ocean. There's the ocean, there's the mountains, and there's the valley of uh, Silicon Valley, San Jose, where I was born and raised. I hear a lot of politics from a lot of Texans saying, hey, Californians, get back to where you came from. You go back, we don't want your politics intruding in our conservative values here in Texas, okay? So, I find that humorous. Super, super humorous. Especially understanding and growing up in the 50s, 60s, in uh, San Jose, California. My parents migrated from Texas. Yes, they migrated along with a lot, thousands upon thousands of Texans and uh, people from Oklahoma to California. They came for the jobs. They came for the opportunity. And they enjoyed and stay there and set up roots because they're gonna, you know, where, where you get a job and it pays well, you say, hey, I'm staying here. I like it. I am employed. I can support my familia. And we're talking about, you know, my neighbors were these six foot four people from Oklahoma, large and overalls, and they go fishing a lot. <laughs> and I go, hey, uh, I would hang out with them and uh, the Kellys. And, you know, they came from Oklahoma. My other neighbor across the street came from Texas. The other neighbor came from Texas. My down the street neighbor came from Sicily. And I would love the diversity down there. I would go to pass by my Sicilian neighbor's house and I go, that smells good. That's chicken cacciatore. Very nice. Very, very nice. I love the smells. And of course, I would go play with the kids, the Giardinis. And uh, they, in the backyard, they'd be drying herbs. Yeah, they'd be drying herbs in this patio area with which was enclosed. And they'd be drying various Italian herbs. And then the backyard in the garage, they had a gigantic, I'm talking about a good six foot wide barrel where they crushed grapes and made their own wine, Italian wine. And they put it in their basement and they would make, you know, the wine. They made the wine, they made the herbs. I saw the dad, you know, kill a, a rabbit, you know, stuck a straw in his leg, go, <laughs> the, the skin would inflate and he would skin it and he, they'd be having rabbit. Very nice. I was, I was really impressed by his people. You know, different cultures, you get impressed by the Italians. You go, man, they make some great food. Yes, some very ingenious folks come from Sicily. And then you go down there with people from Oklahoma. They're making their own lures. They go fishing. They're very, you know, ingenious folks. You know, they know how to uh, enjoy themselves. They're having a lot of fun. I'd hang out with the kids. Tall kids. Gigantic kids. <laughs> you, know, you know, I went to school with them at the elementary school and junior high school. So... You have this diversity. In, Calif in uh, California, you learn to deal with, you know, diversity, uh, different opinions, different things, you know. There's a 60-40 split. 60% 60 of the population in California, this is a rough estimate, by the way. These are just rough estimates, are progressives, liberals, Democrats. The other 40% are, Dem you know, Republicans, you know, conservative. You go down the valleys where the farmers are and stuff like that, and there's very conservative politics down there. Just like Texas. Texas, conversely, is more 60-40, 60% conservative, and 40% Democrat. Okay, so that's a different, different experience. I'm living in Texas, and I'm an uh, old lefty Chicano from uh, California, and I sort of get, uh, you know, I go, I listen to some of the stuff that's going on, I go, uh, this is not to my liking, but, you know, I'm going to vote, and I'm going to vote the way I want, 
And uh, I understand this stuff is, as uh, Joe Biden would say, malarkey. And uh, so that's how I, you know, it's a different reality, a different existence here in Texas, where my family is from, where my cousins still live. A lot of my cousins still live in their little single wides in Crystal City, Texas, uh, doing odd jobs and stuff like that. Not, you know, working at the school, stuff like that. I go visit them once in a while, etc., etc. So we have camping options in both areas. Uh, the thing to understand about camping in in the great state of Texas is that uh, I just came back from uh, Meridian State Park, which I confused with Lake Meridian State Park. We just got recently came from uh, about a month earlier from uh, uh, Lake Mineral Well State Park. So I conflated the two. I apologize for all my viewers. But Lake Meridian State Park right now, early May, green, lush, pleasant. You go wake up in the morning, it's in the 60s with a cool breeze. Very nice. A little bit of humidity, but it's not, uh, you know, off-putting because you got that super nice, super pleasant, cool breeze. Middle of the day, it gets into the 70s and 80s and a bit more humidity. And it, it was okay, but I still can tolerate it. And during the evening, wow, it was very nice. Again, that cool breeze. Temperatures in the 60s and low 70s, very nice. Everything was verdant, green, because it rained. Even though the lake was down by 10 feet, it still was super, super nice down there and camping again in early May 2023 in uh, Meridian State Park was excellent. I really enjoyed myself. Pull through, full hookups, you can't, you can't, absolutely you can't complain about that. Compare that to, um, I think it was in August, I was at uh, uh, Guadalupe, Guadalupe, it's actually the G spell is like a W, Guadalupe State Park in uh, River State Park over there by San Antonio. It was hot. Muy, muy, muy caliente. Everything was desiccated. Everything was brown. The river was down. Usually it's about a good six, seven feet deep, but it was like a foot, two feet deep in a lot of sections, like little puddles. And in the puddles, it would be just growing algae and, and it was murky and messy. People come from the great city of uh, San Antonio, my favorite city in uh, Texas, by the way, to uh, go there. And people come from Austin, even from San Antonio, Fort Worth, and around the world, around the world, uh, to this, uh, you know, Guadalupe River State Park. And they want to just cool off during the summer. They want to go, go in the water and Hey, this is very pleasant. The water's running, it's clear, and it's very pleasant. But that was not the case in July and August at Guadalupe River State Park. It was murky. It wasn't very clear, and it was definitely not running. Okay. <laughs> so there's different times of the year, and, you know, you want to go camping okay in texas uh you know if you want to go to the beach i, I go to the beach any time of the uh, you know whatever i can you know i don't mind a little heat it doesn't bother me uh so i, I went to port o'connor i think it was in the uh, middle of the summer it was very pleasant again we went in the water we had full hookups you know pull through and no problems we had a great great time my wife and i a very nice time but uh, Guadalupe River State Park, not so much. Uh, at least we had some electricity for the air conditioning, some water. We had to do the dump somewhere else. But uh, again, in the summer, don't expect going anywhere pretty much in Texas to be verdant and green. It's going to be hot. It's going to be dry. It's going to be, you know, like that here in the great state of Texas. Best time to go uh, camping, in my opinion, even though there's uh, thunderstorms and stuff in the spring, go in the spring and go in the fall if you can. And if you want to go to the beach, a lot of uh, Canadians and Northerners uh, like the beaches and Southern Texas, especially during the uh, winter, you know, the snowbirds and stuff like that. California, on the other hand, is relatively pleasant relatively pleasant uh, year round, except for if you want to go to the Mojave Desert, you know, Death Valley, uh, and the name says it all, Death Valley. It gets super, super hot down there. I would not go down there in the middle of the summer. And in the middle of the winter, you do not want to go to the mountains where it's, uh, you know, you got 10, 20 feet of snow 
and uh, you might have some issues with all that snow, just saying. First of all, the roads will probably be closed, first of all, okay? But uh, most of the year, if you want to go to the mountains, you know, one thing we did in San Jose, California, when it got hot in California, when we're talking hot, 80s, 90s, uh, we would go to the beach, like I told you earlier, and cool off at the beach. Or we'd go to the mountains and cool off in the mountains, okay? So you have options in California. My wife and I are considering buying a house in California in 25 or 26. Who knows? We're going to be doing some RVing for about a year. That's the plan. We have a lot of plans. A lot of plans have fell through, but hopefully this plan works out. My wife and I are planning to, uh, you know, after a year of, you know, cruising around California and say, hey, this is a nice community. We're going to buy a house here with all our cash. We're going to plop it down and say, hey, we're buying a house like that. Not in Silicon Valley, not in San Francisco, not in LA, not in any expensive area. You know, some, you know, small community off the beaten path, we're going to call it good, okay? We can afford that. Again, my children, my brothers and sisters, and most of my family and my cousins that migrated from Texas live in Silicon Valley. So, so uh, once we get a house, you know, my wife just got back yesterday. Uh, from visiting her friends and doing some work at UC Berkeley and she loves the weather down there and she likes to stay with her friends. She has a lot of friends at UC Berkeley, people that live in San Rafael, people that live in San Jose, San Francisco, the list goes on and on and on. Of course we have, you know, our, my daughters and my granddaughters and my one new great-granddaughter uh, where they all live down there. So we would love to visit them, go to events, hang out. Uh, in addition to that, camping, wow! You know, if I buy a house, let's say for example, Chico, Redding, or Arcata, you just have to go a couple miles, maybe a few more if you really want to. You can go in the Sierras and do some serious camping. Very nice camping, excellent camping. Of course, the uh, issue that, you know, I've been seeing in the news that affects us, you know, people worldwide, Texas, Oklahoma, and definitely California is global warming, you know. I've been seeing all those forest fires, all those floods, all that snow, all that rain. The weather's getting crazy. It used to be rather predictable, you know. Uh, winter, we'd have some rains. You know, maximum amount of rain in San Jose is typically 10, 12 inches a year in call it good. And then it'd be dry during the spring, summer, and fall. And that was it, you know. I never heard of warm rain like we do in Texas. We have that, you know, <laughs> the spring and fall warm rain. No, we only had cold rain during the winter, and that was it. So weather patterns are changing. I hope that when we move to California, we're not going to have, uh, you know, super, super crazy weather, you know. But am I in control of weather? No. All I can do is my part, recycle try to be as environmentally correct. We wrote for the candidates that would, you know, lower greenhouse uh, emissions and promote uh, healthy behaviors for our planet. And of course, we got to hope the rest of the world uh, <laughs> cooperates also. It's not just us, okay? So this has been Asus Manuel Menagarza talking about camping in California versus uh, Texas. Both are excellent. I really enjoy. Uh, this summer, I'm probably going to go to Port O'Connor. Uh, we're also planning to, my wife wants to come with me to Meridian again, uh, you know, do some camping down there. And of course, uh, in a, about late summer, we're going to be going to a wedding in Cresco, Iowa. So we're going to be camping on the way down there, maybe in Oklahoma, maybe in Kansas, Missouri, but definitely in uh, also uh, Iowa. We're going to be going down there and doing some camping and then on the way back. So that should be a lot of fun. Hope you're doing fantastic. This has been Asus Manuel Menegarza. What do you think of my uh, analysis, my perspective? Again, I've lived in the great state of Texas for many, many, many years. I've lived in the fabulous state of California, again, for many, many, many years. And I grew up, you know, in Santa, San Jose, California. But my parents grew up in South Texas, and they've been there for decades, decades, hundreds of years my family the garzas and the menas and the lopezes and the maldonados all have resided in those areas since the 1700s and those 
that element of myself, the indigenous element, has been there for eons. What can you say? So, uh, and of course, a lot of you that are complaining about, hey, all these Californians are coming to Texas and destroying our great state. Uh, understand that a lot of these Californians that are coming back originally came from Texas. So they go, Texans go to California, stay down there for, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and then come back. Uh, I apologize if they're coming back to Texas because it's inexpensive to live here until it doesn't become inexpensive, then they're gonna move somewhere else. If it becomes very expensive in Texas, where do you think everybody's gonna go? They're gonna go somewhere else that's less expensive. Who knows where? So this has been Asus Manuel Benagarza. Thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. I would greatly appreciate it. And ring the bell for future notificaciones, for future notifications. Muchos, muchos, muchos gracias. And uh, please leave your kind and super friendly comments below. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And uh, I'm gonna delete you. If you say, Jesus Garza, go back to where you came from, California. We don't appreciate you here in the great state of Texas. I'm gonna delete you. I'm gonna delete you just like that, bam! And you're gonna be gone, okay? So I'm getting a little bit itchy. This uh, wool, wool uh, shirt started to make me itch. I didn't have no, put no I should have put a t-shirt under it. It's very itchy. So, I'm, so from uh, Fort Worth, Texas, originally from San Jose, California. I used to live in Austin. I used to live in uh, Los Angeles. I used to live in Salinas. I used to live all over the place. I lived in a lot of different places. Hope you're doing fantastic. Gracias. Adios. Bye-bye.